from the 200s to the 300s, early Christian artwork changed dramatically. It became more opulent and grandiose. Whereas once it had served an outsider audience, it became the religious art of the ruling class. Consider, for example, the painted interiors of early catacombs. The paintings are fresh and powerful in their simple folk art style, but the artists were limited to inexpensive materials, water-based paint in basic earth tones, and they used simple, sketchy forms. Very different is the grand burial church of Santa Costanza, the Christian daughter of Roman Emperor Constantine. With arches, upper story illumination, and gleaming marble columns, it is an architectural marvel. Mosaics decorate the ceilings, an expensive, difficult medium that requires teams of skilled laborers and high labor costs. This move from simple, humble approaches to more opulent and elite styles occurred because Costanza's father, Constantine, changed the social and political fortunes of Christianity in the Roman Empire. In the year 313, he issued the Edict of Milan, granting freedom of religion. This meant that Christian art would become more public and more ambitious. It also meant that Christian architecture begins to develop, a tradition that grows and evolves over a millennium and a half. The Christian architecture built in the 300s and 400s established two main patterns of building design, the longitudinal structure and the centrally planned building. Longitudinal buildings have a long rectangular form. In ancient Rome, this design was called a basilica and was frequently used for civic buildings, such as the governmental basilica shown here. The design consisted of a long central space called a nave with side aisles, light poured in from upper story windows called a clerestory. The Church of Santa Sabina is a traditional Roman basilica converted from civic function to sacred space. The nave is ideal for ceremonial processions. Think of a marriage ceremony with the bride slowly walking toward the altar. In early Christianity, bishops and pr priests processed along the nave, chanting and perfuming the space with incense. The most famous basilica built in the ancient Roman world was the Church of Old St. Peter's, the burial place of Peter, founder of the Catholic Church and Papacy. You see the basilica form in this reconstruction drawing. You can't see a photograph of it, because 1,000 years after it was built, Pope Julius II had it destroyed. Julius was a grandiose pope and he wanted something as grand and imposing as himself. After cycling through designs from four famous architects, he settled on this monument to his magnificence, the new St. Peter's in Rome. Today, we think of it as the Vatican. He also hired a guy named Michelangelo to paint his ceiling. Santa Costanza's church is a centrally planned structure, not a basilica. Instead of space moving horizontally from the entrance to the other side of the building, Costanza's building is designed around a central core of open space. The walkway that wraps, that wraps around that central core is called an ambulatory. This form was used for tombs and baptistries. An axis is the central dividing line of a building. A basilica has a horizontal axis. Its direction moves along the nave toward the end point where the holy altar is placed. This creates a movement toward the altar that feels like a journey. In the centrally planned building, the vertical axis runs from earth to sky, 
suggesting a pull toward heaven. This small chapel in the northern Italian city of Ravenna is a centrally planned building, yet it uses two rectangular forms to create a cross-shaped structure. It is associated with Gala Placidia, the daughter of the Roman Emperor Theodosius I. He made Christianity the official state religion in 380, banning the older pagan religion and punishing those who practiced it. A striking feature of Gala Placidia's chapel is the contrast between exterior and interior. Outside, the building is plain brick. Stepping inside reveals a glittering mosaic world of color, beauty, decoration. For a Christian, this purposeful contrast symbolized the departure from the ordinary world of sin to a redemptive heavenly space. This mosaic of Jesus Christ as the Good Shepherd demonstrates the fusion of Christian symbols with the imperial glory of the Roman ruling class. Now that religion had fused with state power and the emperor's authority, Jesus is shown wearing the purple robe of an emperor. Purple was made from rare, expensive shellfish and signaled imperial status. This exquisite carved onyx gemstone celebrates Rome's exalted emperor Augustus. He is shown seated on the top row of the gem, positioned with a muscular bare chest to appear as a human emanation of the god Jupiter. A victory wreath above his head deifies him, and the staff he holds symbolizes power. The imperial iconography from Augustus's gem has been applied to the mosaic figure of Jesus, who sits on rocks as if on a throne, his halo a version of the emperor's victory wreath, the staff he holds symbolizing both crucifixion and imperial power. Christianity has moved from being an outsider religion practiced in private to the imperial state religion. The art expresses that change.